What's going on? Welcome to this ride along video. Today I want to talk to you about the braking process of your car. I'm driving around in my 2020 STI. I have 759 miles on the odometer. So this car technically is still within the recommended 1000 miles of braking period from the manufacturer, right? With the stipulations of not exceeding 4000 RPMs and varying your engine speed. So if you've heard the old legal adage that for every expert, there's an equal and opposite expert, the same holds true for the braking period of a car. For every person that tells you that you should drive the car like you stole it from the lot, there's going to be somebody who tells you that you should baby the car. And I think a lot of the confusion comes from how vague the instructions are. I think the verbiage used in the owner's manual is somewhat open to interpretation. So let me know in the comments section if you have any experience with cars, what braking process has worked for you in the past. So in order to kind of appreciate the braking process, we really have to understand what's going on and why we do it to begin with. And the reason we do the braking process is to seat the piston rings inside the pistons and inside that cylinder properly. Basically, you're mating the piston rings within the cylinder. And the way that that happens is that you have brand new cylinders and a brand new car will have a very rough surface. And that rough surface is actually put on the cylinder on purpose. So as the piston rings is going up and down, it's scraping against that rough surface. And simultaneously, the piston rings and the cylinder are breaking in together so that they can work in unison to allow the least amount of gas to escape from the combustion process on top to the crankcase underneath. You still want oil to lubricate the, the cylinder but you don't want excessive oil so that you're burning it so your piston rings are under spring tension but that's not enough pressure to actually push hard against the cylinder walls and actually scrape properly so that you have even wear around the entire piston ring what's actually doing that is the gas pressure that's seeping behind the piston rings and pushing the piston rings out a normal byproduct of, of this is some of that gas pressure will seep through will blow by the piston rings and make it its way into the crankcase so that's why it's called blow by so high pressures in the crankcase causes all sorts of issues you know you can have loss of power you can have you can develop leaks because that pressure and that oil has to find a way out and you know it's going to try to find the, the path of least resistance basically so it could either go back up the cylinder or find its way out a, another gasket somewhere or a seal somewhere so it's important to vent that pressure in the crankcase now it used to be vented to the atmosphere obviously that's really bad for the atmosphere so they developed the modern pcv system so that crankcase gas gets routed through the pcv system and it makes its way back into the intake that vapor that's making its way back into the intake has oil within it and if you don't separate that oil from that vapor that oil ends up getting burned in the combustion process and that's the reason why we have air oil separators and, and catch cans and i just ordered my air oil separator so i'm going to be doing a much more detailed talk and installation video on that when i get it but i digress the whole point here is that if you have excessive gases making their way into the crankcase you're going to have excessive blow by so that's one of the mechanisms by which you're going to have excessive oil consumption if you don't seat those piston rings properly in that cylinder you can also have oil just straight up being burned right there in the cylinder from oil seeping from the crankcase up into the cylinder because the rings are not effective so for these reasons it's very very important to break in your car so that those piston rings can seat properly around that piston and give you the tightest seal that you can get it's never going to be perfect but you can make it far worse by not doing the braking procedure properly. So like I said, you need that pressure to push that piston ring out and whoever manufactured your vehicle, in the case of the STI, obviously Subaru, they determined that the best RPMs to allow that pressure to happen is around 4,000 RPMs. That's quite a bit for this car. You know, 4,000 RPMs is just, you know, 2,500 RPMs shy of red line. So that's not that restrictive, but they figure that much more than that can cause really high pressures, really high temperatures, and you can cause uneven wear of those rings and uneven mating. And again, that's counterproductive to what you're trying to do. And the same thing happens if you're just kind of coasting at 2000 RPMs or whatever, and you're not varying your engine speed and you don't present that pressure to those piston rings to push out against the cylinder. That's the reason why you shouldn't put the car on cruise control when you get it and you should vary your engine speeds. So just because the verbiage says not to have hard acceleration or hard stopping in the manual doesn't mean that you shouldn't present the car the load that it needs for that process to take place. So when you get the car new, the best thing you can do, first of all, warm up the car. You have to warm up the car because metal reacts to heat 
and it'll expand and you want all of those metals that are involved in this process to be at their operating temperature so you know warm up your car for five ten minutes before you take off and start doing this and then vary your speed from idling to 4,000 rpms never allow the car to just sit there at a constant rpms never put the car on cruise control for those first uh, few hundred miles you should use engine braking to keep those rpms high as much as possible you're going to burn a lot of gas but it is what it is this is all for the long-term health of your engine your brakes also have to break in and i mean that happens very early on when you uh, first get your car but if you're off the lot, wide open throttle, hidden red line, you're probably gonna end up stopping very abruptly. You're not gonna be doing yourself any favors because then your rotors and your brake pads are not gonna wear in evenly like they're supposed to, and you can end up having long-term issues from that as well. Another big point of contention here is how long should you do this for? A thousand miles is a long time. The break-in process happens very very early on when you first start driving the car if you're buying your car even if it's new and it already has 40 miles from people test driving the car then you better believe that a good chunk if not all of the braking process has already been done by the people who test drove the car or even by dealer employees but the point is that the braking process happens early if you're doing it right 500 miles is enough but if you don't and you're giving the car excessive rpms or you're doing the opposite and just uh, driving around and, and putting your car in cruise control you're going to cause glazing of that cylinder wall and you might never even know that you did damage except that you may have maybe excessive oil consumption you might not even realize where it's coming from and it may just be from a poor braking process when the car was brand new so those are all kind of technical or me mechanical reasons why you need a braking process but honestly modern engines are not as sensitive as they used to be the honing process used to be much more rough and you needed long periods of time for, for this to actually take place with the materials and the machining techniques that, that they used to use. That's not the case anymore. These cars are built with re really exacting techniques and good materials, so you don't need a very long braking period. That said, the braking period is a perfect opportunity for you to learn your car. If you have limited experience on manual transmissions, this is a good opportunity for you to learn to drive your car before you start driving aggressively. This particular car has different drive modes. The difference between intelligent mode and and sport sharp it's, it's pretty striking you know when I put the car on sport sharp mode from intelligent mode the car sometimes lurches forward so that, that's how big of a difference there is you know it has that adjustable center differential that requires a little bit of know-how this is a, a good opportunity to really learn to drive the car gracefully it takes time to learn rev matching it takes time to learn where the clutch bites and it takes even more time to have it all be second nature which is ultimately the goal so for all of those reasons I decided not to rush this process and just take my time for the first 500 miles I was very strict with it and now I'm just kind of getting to know my car when I hit that thousand miles I'm going to change the oil which is something I recommend you do because uh, if you have any metal fragments from the manufacturing process where they're, they're gonna be in your oil it's a smart thing to just change your oil after that first thousand miles and I'm also using it as an excuse to install a quick valve so that's a video coming up but that's that so again, let me know in the comments section what are your experiences may have been in the past with breaking in cars. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next video. Take care.